Hello, family law attorneys. I'm Casey Mraz, founder of Juris Digital, and today we're going to be talking about how you can use local SEO with this quick checklist to make sure your listing's optimized, to show up for more searches where your ideal clients are already looking for you, and sign more of the better cases you're looking for. So if you're like most of the family law attorneys I work with, your goal is to get high quality leads. There's a lot of different elements that go into that. And uh, of course, it starts with ranking. If you're not showing up where your potential clients are looking for you, then you don't have a choice. Even if somebody referred you and they Google your name, for example, and they look at your Google business listing and you don't have reviews that are great out there, they're not gonna call you. So all this plays an important perspective, not only from a branding visibility, but a search and credibility perspective as well. So let's start by going through a very quick list of checklist items that you can look. There's a lot uh, on here now, but uh, we'll go through them one by one and make sure that you have a full understanding of them. So first and foremost, what we're talking about here is the Google Local Pack. So these are powered by a free listing called your Google Business Listing. So um, your Google business listing is something that you can set up for free if you haven't already set it up and you can claim it. Now, assuming that you're able to claim it, uh, if you Googled your firm name at the top, you're going to see a place to manage the listing at the top of the search results here. And that's where you would make some of these changes whenever we're talking about changes to the listing itself. But you'll notice these listings are also connected to websites. That's where a lot of the ranking equity will also come from. So connecting it to your powerful website is a great way to reinforce to Google exactly what you do, the clients you serve, and get this in front of the right audience. So, a couple things. The first thing that you need to do if you wanna have a possibility of showing up here is ensure that your office is physically located in the city of search. So if you're in, I put Orlando up here for example, but you're looking for clients in Miami, the only way to show up here, which shows up right beneath the ad, so it's very important from a prominent uh, ranking and display standpoint, you need an office in Miami. So you have to have an office and more importantly, or just as important, it needs to be located in the city of search. And I bring that up because that's a problem right now. Let's look at Orlando, Florida. So if I do Orlando, Florida, what do you see here? You see this red outline that's going on. That's where Google understands the city limits to be. So if your office has an Orlando address, but you're right outside this, you're in trouble. Uh, that office is not going to be adequate enough for ranking in here. It's just you're shooting yourself on the foot. So you would need to make an alternative um, adjustment. So number two, you do need to make sure that you have an office somewhere. So uh, I'm going to type in uh, Orlando High Net Worth Divorce Attorney. <clears throat> this particular one doesn't have a local pack, so I'm just going to do that. In this case, you would optimize for... Uh, organic local results which are just the standard pages here that's another optimization tactic but today we're really focused on um, just the local pack and notice how I put the city in I'm putting the city in because I'm not located in Orlando and I'm using that as an example most searches actually happen without the city in there because Google already knows where you are Google knows where you're searching from so uh, a lot of times that local pack will display for a lot more keywords in your market and that's something you want to check out but number two you need to have an actual physical office so when we're talking about your physical office that's your business uh, that has an address uh, phone number and a you know unique suite number for example co-working spaces you know the guidelines on those kind of vary from time to time google constantly updates them it's not ideal but in some cases it'll work just fine specifically if you have your own signage in your office and you can prove that and that's what i mean when i'm talking about office you need a way to prove that your office is here so before you have the idea of let me create 100 of these listings across you know 100 different uh, cities you need to actually have somewhere that you can prove that you have a business listing and then to pass google's guidelines that business needs to be staffed during the displayed hours obviously there's a lot of nuances there and a lot of wrong information on google which we won't go into right now but that's kind of where we're at and one thing that's an important pro tip that you should know about is if your office is in an office with a lot of other divorce attorneys for example using this same one guess what Google's only going to display one at this address in this local pack okay and your goal with this is to basically the ideal situation for you would be to show up everywhere people are searching across the city because with local packs if I'm standing right here and do a search for your divorce attorney, 
or best divorce attorney or whatever that keyword is, I might see different results if I move a mile that way or a quarter mile that way. So it's heavily dependent on the physical location I'm searching from, whether I'm on my mobile device or whether I'm on a computer. So the best results come when you really dominate a city, when you have that prominence and that authority and you're really ranking anywhere in that city, especially high net worth areas, if that's your target market. So a little pro tip there to keep in mind, but going back to the office, that's something that you need to do. So next, you need to think uh, your primary category here. So you can set multiple categories and you want to set as many that are closely relevant to you. But again, using the example of divorce attorney, if you're a divorce attorney, do not select family law attorney as your primary category. That can be the secondary category. But if you're primarily handling divorce cases, over 50% of your firm's business is that, your primary category needs to be divorce attorney. So I think that's important, something that you should know about. So um, let's move on. So if you are a divorce attorney and you're in a building that has 10 other divorce attorneys, you have an uphill battle. It's not that it's not winnable, but you need to do more work. You need to have more authority in the long run, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes, uh, to make sure to beat those competitors to, so that you can overcome them. Because if you don't, you will always be trampled by them. That's just one of the unfortunate realities. Another unfortunate reality is if you look at these business names, look at these, Conti Moore Law Divorce Lawyers, hmm. Orlando Divorce Lawyer and Family Law, <laughs> Arwani Law Firm, Orlando Divorce Lawyer. What do we notice there? I think we all see it. There's a keyword, a very important keyword in that business name. Is that a ranking factor? Yes. Is it an important ranking factor? <clears throat> it's a very important ranking factor. Uh, it's one of the more important ones. And with that being said, if you have a DBA or fictitious name that you can file for your business and do that and put it on your signage so that you can prove to Google that this is the actual name of your business, then I would say absolutely do that if that's how you want to brand yourself. It's an easy win, an easy way to get up there. Now, if you can't report it or if you can't put it on your signage, <clears throat> you can get it suspended. And that's bad because then you have no visibility. Now, also, if your competitors are, for example, Arwani Law Firm here, if I were to pull this up and take a look at his profile, if his office signage did not have that, that could be a problem for him. So there we go. Not looking so good. If somebody were to report this and this is their current signage, Google would probably edit that business name and take that out of there. And, uh, you know, that's what local SEO nerds do all do. I'll do all day as we try to get our clients to the top of these rankings, the top of these listings. So um, these are important things to, to pay attention to. So now that we talked about the primary category, you do want to do the additional categories that are going to be relevant to you, the ones that are really going to be closely related. So again, if you're in family law doing divorce lawyer, then you're probably going to do ones like divorce attorney, number one, family law attorney, number two. Then you might do a lawyer, but that's getting a little bit more narrow or a law firm because you're probably going to start showing up in other searches depending on what information is already on the web across you. So um, so after that, what you want to do focusing on high leverage things that are going to increase your rankings is that one I just mentioned actually is reporting spam. So this would be considered spam if his signage doesn't match. You can check out Google Street View. Uh, and get those pictures and you could submit those using the Google redressal form. Uh, so that's something that Google offers. And um, basically you can Google that. There's a complaint form that you can use to say, hey, look, this is wrong. You know, let's do that. And Google will edit that and remove it. So the next thing we want to look at is reviews. So if you look at all these listings, 44 reviews, 92, and this guy, Conti Moore, is actually doing a very good job of getting reviews. It's clearly a part of their process. The best firms that get reviews constantly bake it into their process. They reward staff members, they reward team members. Maybe it's a monthly contest for a gift certificate, a movie night, whatever, or it could be monetary for each one. But any interaction somebody has with your law firm, if they pick up the phone to call you, even if you can't help them, specifically through your legal services, you probably know somebody that can. can. So putting that best brand foot forward and helping people out no matter what, and then doing the ask saying, hey, were you satisfied with this answer? Would you be happy to leave me a review? 
and then humanize it by having your staff say things like, my, my performance at this law firm is actually based part on client reviews. Would you mind leaving one? And those are for people that aren't even clients. They just had an interaction with your brand. So when you're not, when you're talking about huge numbers, even if you have a low volume law firm, you're only taking 20 cases a year, you can still do this. You can still get those numbers if you just have the best customer experience in mind. So I think that's absolutely important. And uh, it's something that I use, you know, as well. And it's something that I, that I preach all the time. So make sure to stay on top of those reviews, gamify it in your firm with those tactics. And, um, you know, the other thing is too, quick review tactic. You don't have to wait until a case is over. A lot of people think I'm going to wait to the end of a case. And I see this, especially with like personal injury attorneys. I have to wait to the end of a case to ask for that review. No, anytime there's a win in the case is when you ask anytime there's a moment of happiness. If they're already a client, that is when you ask and you tell them the importance, you know, and you know, the best marketing systems <clears throat> are not just ranking on Google forever. That's going to be a piece of your marketing, but it's like a stool. What are the other two legs that are holding you up? And one of them should always be referral marketing. You should be building a practice that people want to talk about. You should do great work for clients and they want to tell people about you, but you also have to remember, that people are not gonna do that unless you constantly are top of mind with them. And that's where a good brand awareness and remarketing and, and uh, top of mind awareness campaigns come in so that you can be there and you can incentivize past clients or anybody that's had an interaction with you uh, in the past to continue to refer your business because that's when you get to a firm that's kind of you know, growing a little bit like this to skyrocketing, right? So anyway, <clears throat> some important things that I've learned working with hundreds of attorneys, but also uh, just interviewing and talking to them through my podcasts and conferences and in various, uh, various ways. So, um, so next with reviews on that topic, it's not just about getting to a certain number and leaving it. It's really about review velocity. So it's not just how many reviews am I getting today, but what about tomorrow or this month? And what you want to do is you want to be the leader in your market. If you notice the other firms are growing by one or two reviews a month, you know, you want to get three or four. Okay, the numbers don't have to be huge because you'll see that most firms don't put in the effort to do this. So to win is really just about doing the work, putting in that effort um, because that's not commonly done. So, uh, and the quality reviews too, you know, they should be real. You don't want people to just click the star rating. You want people to, to, leave, uh, to leave information there about their actual experience. So next, as far as Google uh, business profile optimization, is let's look at this profile here and do a quick teardown. So one, they have some cool images up here. This one, the TEDx one, obviously a trust signal right away. People see that, they understand that, they're putting a good foot forward. Um, they could upload more photos for sure, but is what it is. That's something that you should do as well as a part of your regular process, aim to upload photos every single week of you at work, happy clients, anything that you can, and even client testimonial videos. They can be interpersonal. You see how big TikTok is these days, people just recording videos on their phone, you know, get those coming in on a stream and upload those to your Google business profile. So right here, you'll notice the hours. They're open 24 hours in this particular case. This is important for several reasons. One, the time of day that I'm searching, if your law firm is not showing as open, you are less likely in some cases to not show up. So if my law firm is closed at five o'clock PM and somebody searches at five or five PM when I'm off work and have time to actually focus on my marital issues when I need to find an attorney, um, you are greatly diminishing your ability to rank. So when should you be open? Well, according to Google, whenever your office is staffed. So this is a bit of a line that you need to tow and uh, walk that finally. But uh, you know, if you can staff your office 24 seven, then publishing these hours are a great thing that will help you. And I'm not saying that you're going to get a waterfall of calls after 5 p.m., but you know, you're looking for these very specific cases, these very ideal clients, and you need to put your best foot forward to be there for them when they need you. So services in Google business profiles, there is a option to add your services. So Google will pre-populate a lot of these, and this is a very important place to spend your time. Um, I'm guessing that this family law firm, it looks like they're divorce lawyers, but you got to pay attention here because look at this. What do we see at the very bottom? wrongful death. It could be that they do wrongful death cases too. They take the odd one here or there, but more than likely Google added that 
because all the time Google is automatically updating your profile based on information it finds across the web. So you need to check this weekly as well to make sure, hey, is this in line with what I need? And if not, you need to remove those because what you'll start seeing, and I, I heard it again last week, I was talking to a firm, we had just edited these, turned them down, and we have alerts on, but we got an alert and basically said, hey, look, they're ranking for a keyword that they, the cases they don't take. And that day before we changed it, they said, hey, we're starting to get these calls, but they're not relevant. So why do you think that is? Because of this. So Google will automatically do that. You gotta pay attention. So continuing with the profile teardown, we already talked about the uh, address and the importance there. We've already talked about um, the reviews. Popular times, this is given by Google. Quick pro tip here, okay? Google's basing this obviously on whatever mobile data that they're collecting from phones and you know when people are going there. But one of the ranking factors that seems to have an increase is people requesting the driving directions, this button here. So anytime you send somebody to your office, you send them a Google Maps link. You increase those driving directions in every way that you can. And if your employees are even doing it on the way to work, you know, that's kind of crazy, but these little little things can make that competitive difference. It's that competitive edge, right? So if you're looking for like hacks and quick tips, there's not a ton of them, but things that would have an impact, that would be one of them. So one of the things we also do talking about reviews that we say include keywords, there's really no evidence that that has, has a big impact or any impact at all but Google does change the algorithm uh, from time to time. And we also know that Google looks at a lot of information across the web, right? When it's saying, what is this entity? What is your firm about? It's not just using the sources that you give it. It's looking at the web and what other people are saying about you. So it is feasible that even if we can't track it right now, that it could be used in the future. So that's just one of those quirky things that, that I would say. So um, the next thing I wanna talk about is your map pin. So if I went to Google Maps, one of the things that really horrible people are doing right now is they are moving map pins. And what that does is if I were to move a map pin for this office, it's gonna stop ranking, like moving it outside the city limit, right? I talked about that uh, before. By the way, this is a little plugin that I use <clears throat> um, that just kind of is telling me, hey, look, what's everything about this listing? And I'll talk about some of that here in a second. But um, make sure your map pin is where it's supposed to be. And if it's not, make sure to move it to the proper location. So uh, looking at some of this data is actually kind of helpful. You can see what categories that they have where Google won't directly tell us that. Um, and it will tell us that it's a verified listing, that they've claimed it, their phone number. And look at their website here. This is the next area I wanna talk about. Notice what page it's connected to. It's connected to their homepage. If you're a single location law firm, basically always that's what you're gonna wanna do. And we'll take a look at her specific one here in a second. And then you'll notice all of this after this. This is called a UTM code. Easy way to remember to just look at those first three letters here. You see a UTM and it's basically they're tracking. They're working with an agency or internally to say this is where these website visitors are coming from because we can see how many people looked at your local listing versus how many people found you organically, right? So give them that credit there. We'll click here. Now, what do you notice about the page when we first land here? Let's first look at the title tag. That's why I'm hovering up here. So Orlando, Florida, Family Law and Divorce Attorneys, Conti Moore. It looks like a longer title tag. It keeps going. Very clearly, everything on this page right now is very well around what they do, which is, uh, you know, family law and divorce attorneys. So, um, and it's talking about their location. So all that's great, basically, the page that's connected to your Google Business Profile, if you're single location, should be your homepage. If you're doing multi-locations over two or three locations, you're probably gonna start building out location pages because at that point, you're gonna care about this meta title here and you're gonna care about the H1, the heading tag here. You want that to be localized uh, in two ways. I guess one around the city or geographic region that you're targeting and search is very localized these days. So if I'm looking for a divorce attorney and I don't type in Orlando, I'm still going to see Orlando divorce if I'm searching within Orlando. So basically each city can justify that as long as you can create content appropriately around that. But you're going to want to optimize these title tags, the content and the heading to really localize that. Um, and that's important. And the reason we do the home pages is because Google, they were built on a foundation of, uh, you know, the algorithm is built on a foundation of 
how many other authoritative websites are linking back to you. Those act as a vote of confidence. So with that in mind, Google built its algorithm on that. And typically on any website, the most powerful page from a link perspective, other websites linking to your firm, talking about your firm online, that's going to be your homepage. So if you're taking the other approach where you have multi offices, multi city, then you're going to have to think about, hey, how can I build authority to these other pages as well? Uh, because that's one of the top ranking factors. So, and when we're talking about ranking, whether it's internally or even other websites linking back to you, the thing that we need to pay attention to is anchor text because Google still looks at that here in 2024 and they're saying, hey, let's try to understand what this page is about based on this text here. This is the anchor text, the clickable part of the link. So this page is probably about divorce, Google thinks, and they come here. Okay, it's about an Orlando divorce lawyer, great. And then they're reading through the content on this page and understanding that. So um, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind there. You know, internal and external anchor text is something you want to pay attention to. Um, I'm not going to get into the story brand stuff today, but I will have another video on that because the other problem that I see is people spending a lot of money on SEO or investing a lot of resources and they get the rankings, but then the phone doesn't ring. And so why is that? It could be a number of reasons. It could be that they're not answering their phone or their answering service sucks or whatever. But nine times out of 10, it's actually because of the content on their page. It's that I land on this page and it's not speaking to me. And this one isn't bad, to be fair. It's divorce is one of the most stressful things you'll ever deal with. Okay, trying to relate to me. You shouldn't have to deal with it on your own. Hiring the right divorce lawyer. She is trying to kind of define herself as a guide a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot better way to do this and enhance that. Um, you know, who's not going to say award-winning Orlando divorce lawyers? Like, that's obviously there for SEO reasons. But, you know, you need to really relate to those clients. And you need to show them that you're the guide um, and that we can help them through this situation. So more on story brand in another video. Huge missed opportunity for most. So going back to a couple other ranking factors I just wanted to touch on before I end this video real quickly, some more of the important ones is uh, with reviews. Another pe mistake that a lot of people make is they don't respond to reviews. They see these reviews, they get them from clients, but they're not responding to them and this person is and you know what if you're not sure how to respond to reviews throw that into chat gpt and say here's a review respond to this for me and in case you haven't done that why not i would actually probably use claude for this because it sounds a bit more but you are conti more attorneys you write um compassionate i can't spell today helpful information. Respond to this review for me. Boom, boom, boom. And then there we go. Cool. You could copy and paste something like that. So, you know, maybe not perfect. You probably want to do a human way. I'm just trying to show you a thing that you could do to make it easier if you found that helpful. So, um, other things that you need to focus on, I mentioned backlinks and anchor text specifically, but links from other sources. The links that you need to focus on are ones that are great for your market. So if you're in Orlando, what I would do is I would type in Orlando Business Directory, Orlando Chamber of Commerce, and I would find the top few listings here that get ranked. Um, I would also say, hey, if you're sponsoring any local events like Little Leagues or you're contributing to a nonprofit cause, make sure your list is a sponsor and they're linking back to your page. Those are the links that everybody in the world can get. So you should have them. It's like table stakes for entering and ranking that coveted local pack. But how do you go further? How do you get more links that other people uh, aren't getting? There's a million different ways to do it. You know, the way that I prefer to do it these days is use a service that was like Haro but quoted, this is a paid service. Essentially, I'm getting our clients media interviews and uh, they're responding to journalist questions and being listed on important websites. You know, I get interviewed all the time, do podcasts, do newspapers, uh, TV, conferences, whatever. All that helps reinforce 
my brand. It helps me get in front of the audience of clients that I want to sign. And, you know, again, if you're in family law looking for high net worth, you want to be listed in Forbes. You want to have people talking about you there because that's a link that will help your Google local pack authority. But what's it going to actually also do? Probably bring you business, real business from clients that you care about. And, um, you know, links from where your ideal clients hang out. And if you're doing high net worth divorce, again, sorry to beat that example to death, but let's say that you found that you work best with complicated business um, ownership divorces, then, you know, Entrepreneur or Inc. And, and those magazines getting quoted in front of that audience and how you've helped people through those journeys, I can't tell you the value that that will carry, not only from a brand perspective or an SEO perspective, but from a monetary perspective, from the, the fees that you're going to bring in from signing those ideal clients and talking to your ideal clients where they are right now in their journey, <clears throat> which is likely the most difficult point in their life. So they're looking for that trusted guide. They're looking for somebody to carry them through. So, um, so ultimately, I have a list, guys, that has 290 ranking factors that you can pay attention to. But in this video, we just covered some of the most basic ones that are going to have the biggest impact for you. So if you're looking to get better at Google search results, get more clients and sign more of those cases that you want, make sure to comment, send me the list in the comments, and I will send you the checklist absolutely free, no questions asked. And if you find that you're in need of help, feel free to give me a call shoot us an email, fill out our form. We're happy to talk. All we do every day is help law firms sign more of their ideal cases online. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you and have a great day.